Hi, in this slide I want to review what are called the 11 elements of total procurement cost, or TPC. And you'll notice in the title slide I've put service. In other words, the question is, we might say we have high fill rates or zero errors or on-time delivery, or we have callbacks or heroic recovery response time uh, aspects or service, but those are the features. What, what's the benefit? How does that lower one or more of the elements of the customer's total procurement costs. So what I'm going to do is go through these costs with you. Um, when, when we first go to buy something in our personal lives or our commercial lives, uh, there is buying costs. In other words, what's it cost to finally get the stuff to our place? Then if we don't use it right away and we have to sort of store it somewhere before we use it, then we have holding and carrying costs. So there's it's a chronological stream of 11 elements here. Uh, when it comes to the buying cost, the first thing that we always think about uh, is price because of the 11 elements, this is the only immediate, measurable, knowable item. All the rest of these costs are so hidden that, uh, or, or, or so unmeasurable or e un, not easily measured that they are hidden or people think, in a sense, they do them for free. If we want to get a low price, we tend to have to go shop for it. Uh, now, some people put enormous value in their time, uh, other people don't, and that's just the way it is. So, so some people, I remember sort of incredulous, I heard a you know, well-off uh, uh, person who was complaining about trying to find a pair of lamps for their living room and how it had taken all day every day for two weeks. Well, they've, they've got the time to do that. When we go and, and, and decide to have a reverse auction and buy from two or three different people, to get the same total volume of stuff, we're, we're having two, three, four, five times the paperwork costs. And again, we have to sort of think, well, what, what's, what's the cost of doing that? Out of sight is out of mind, and we think it's a lot less than, than it is. We also find that right away there starts to be a trade-off. People who tend to have very low prices have very lousy service. And when they have very lousy service, the stuff doesn't show up. Now you can't do what you have to do for lack of the stuff. So that creates expediting time for somebody in the buying function, although that's, that's just the tail of what we'll call uptime economics, which you don't see on the slide. That's a chronologically later uh, building block in the supply chain or service value chain from, from a distributor's viewpoint. Then if the, the stuff arrives, but it's the wrong stuff, then we have mistakes. You know, it's, it's, it's dented, it looks like the right product, but it's the wrong product in the box, uh, that kind of stuff. Or maybe the physical goods are good, right, but the paperwork is wrong, the price is wrong, et cetera, and that creates a, additional back office paperwork, which is, tends to be out of sight, out of mind, and therefore for free. And then when the stuff arrives, we have sometimes the issue of internal handling. At very large corporations, we may deliver stuff to a back dock, and there are you know, a couple people, union people per lift truck who receive it, and they go store it someplace, and then... Somebody in the bowels of the organization, maybe in Building 35, says, oh, I need some more copy paper, or I need some more business forms, or I need uh, you know, some more medical supplies into this closet in this part of the, the, the building. So that triggers internal paperwork. Uh, somebody had, creates internal handoffs from different people, and every time there's a handoff, there has to be paperwork to commemorate that. Otherwise, auditors say things could be stolen. So sometimes it's better for a big corporation to outsource all the internal handling to the distributor in some sort of integrated uh, relationship to get rid of internal handling uh, paper costs, if you really will. Uh, so, and then once it gets to the final consumption point, you know, where it's used to maximize uptime economics or not, then we can start to look at, at, uh, at carrying costs. Now, when it comes to carrying costs, distributors structurally are the low-cost producers of storage costs because when you think about what's the cost per square foot of a big old metal warehouse in the middle of a, a bad part of warehouse town as opposed to you know, some fancy office place where a doctor works or uh, some fancy uh, manufacturing plant with lots of power and over overhead and so forth, better that we outsource bulky stuff to some place where it's, it's, it's more efficient to store it. When it comes to tying your money up in inventory, in theory, the distributor ties the least amount of money up in inventory because they are buying from many, many customers 
one pile, and the customers are sharing that one pile, so that pile turns a lot faster at the distributor's place because it's, it's shared inventory, if you will, as opposed to if I just buy it directly to my place and I'm the only guy that uses it, then it's going to turn more slowly. And, of course, if we have inventory, then we have to worry about is it going to shrink or lose, you know, get lost. So we have to count it and, 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 uh, and move it here and move it there and those sort of things. And at the end of the year, when we do count it, it's not all there or it is there for the third, fourth, fifth, sixth year. We realize this has become obsolete. We need to write it off. So they're different. Whether it's damaged, stolen, or all will be written off, that all goes into the shrinkage total. And then lastly, if we just have more square footage and more inventory and overhead, all this is going to add up to general overhead costs as far as taxes and insurance. So in theory, you know, people that say, oh, uh, let's do just-in-time inventory, what that, that will do is it erases, as I erase this, this slide screen, it erases all of these costs. They all disappear. Um, and if we marry one supplier, typically we get the best price. We don't we don't want to do any shopping time because we give a big honk and contract and say just you it's your job to get here just in time. We may automate the paperwork because we did marry one supplier. We made sure we got the supplier who is the best service value, and in exchange for giving them all the business, we get guarantees with penalties uh, if they don't to 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 deliver on time to zero out you know our downtime expediting costs. We also get guarantees as far as zero mistakes, and if it's delivered right to the consumption point, there's no internal handling. So you can see how a 100% uh, integrated sole supply uh, delivered to the consumption point just in time kind of uh, thinking and approach would, would zero out or lower all these elements, including getting a lower price. Now from a seller's viewpoint, the price may be going down, but the key is our total cost to serve because of the huge volume and the way we can plan how we deliver it, uh, that goes down as much or more than the price, so we still make a, a good net profit. So those are the 11 elements of total procurement cost. Thanks.